today we're talking about Council District 8. There are a lot of changes and new developments happening here. And joining me now to discuss this is Councilman Marquise Harris Dawson. You represent this area. Thank you so much for joining us. It's good to be here. Thank you. We are actually in a park. You yeah, mentioned this we're park. In the port. We're in a park. Uh, parks are very important to us. We view our parks as ground zero for public safety efforts. It's where you can bring young people, it's where you can bring families, it's where we can be community. This pool was about to close and so myself and the council and the mayor intervened and so we're excited uh, that in just a few weeks we're going to open it up and it'll be full of young people swimming from you know the break of dawn all the way until the sun goes down. Wow, what's been the reaction from the community about this park? The community is ecstatic. I think there have been a few kids who figured out how to jump the fence and test it out to make sure it's okay for everybody else. Uh, but I think, you know, the excitement is bursting at the seams. Mm -hmm. And parks, you know, help keep kids off the streets, correct? That's right. It keeps kids occupied. It keeps them relationships with each other. And then when there are disputes, because young people, like adults, you're going to get into disputes. And so young people different than older uh, folks can be taught the process to settle a dispute that doesn't include violence. And you can learn that in a park whether it's in your soccer league or in your little league baseball or your basketball league or the dance class or in the pool. Part of this park uh, was dedicated to a young woman who was killed right before the LA riots. Can you, can you talk to me about so that? So Latasha Harlins tragically lost her life at Empire Liquor in 1991. Uh, this is the park that Latasha Harlins played in and so recently Reckon Parks in cooperation with Latasha Harlins' family and Netflix rebuilt the playground completely and we renamed the playground the Latasha Harlins Playground here at Algin Sutton Park. And I have to say the playground is lovely. So what about entertainment? Everyone loves to have fun. Any new projects coming to this well, area? Well, we're very excited because culture is so important to our district. We're very excited about Destination Crenshaw, which is really a cultural streetscape experience. will feature both fine art at the highest level of artists from uh, this community that are known all over the world. Uh, it will also feature performance venues so that local artists have a way of doing performances in the community. It's really tragic, I feel, that this part of the city is so much a driver of what is the entertainment capital of the world, the city of Los Angeles. Really, a lot of that fuel comes from this community, but our community doesn't benefit from it. And so Destination Crenshaw seeks to reverse that. And so it says, if you want to hear the music, if you want to consume the artwork, if you want to be entertained, you got to come to the place that birthed and nurtured that entertainment. And so whether it's Issa Rae and, and her television show, or Ava DuVernay or Kendrick Lamar, or whatever it is, it really comes from the heart of the black community of Los Angeles. And we want you to be able to consume it in the heart of the black community of Los Angeles. So let's shift gears now and talk public safety. What can we do to increase public safety? Well, the first and most important thing around public safety is just the sheer number of guns on the streets. You know, the press really covered the run on toilet paper during the pandemic. What they didn't cover was the run on guns. More guns were sold in 2020 than in any year that they've been keeping track. And because of uh, we're organized by states in this country, we have very good gun laws in California. They don't have such great gun laws in Arizona or Nevada or nearby states. So people can just go across the border, come back with the weapons. And what happens is you have an increase in shootings everywhere. So we got to deal with guns and we got to press the federal government to do something about the, the widespread availability of guns. I mean, young people can get a gun quicker than they can get an automobile in this city. And so you got to change that. But in the meantime, what we do is make sure that our public safety resources are very close to the ground. So that means we want officers that know the community, the community knows them, that they're embedded in the community, that they have a relationship with the community. We want gang intervention workers who have a history in the community that have been here for generations and have connections and know where the fault lines are, know where disputes are likely to pop up and help manage those. You helped introduce a resolution to support the federal George Floyd Act. Tell us why you did that and what it's about. We did that because uh, we thought we wanted Los Angeles to be uh, one of the loudest in the course, demanding that Washington implement 
police reform. Uh, a lot of the reforms in the George Floyd uh, bill uh, have already been done here in Los Angeles, so there's nothing controversial for us per se, but we understand it's controversial for the nation because when you're a citizen and you go across this line or that line, a cop is a cop is a cop, and it hurts LAPD officers if officers down the road or in another state uh, behave in a, in a way that causes a decay in trust of law enforcement. Our officers end up dealing with that, whether they're the ones who did it or not. And so, you know, we got uh, um, 18,000 police departments in the United States. Most of them have less than 10 officers. And most of them, frankly, have very low, if, if any, standards at all, especially when you compare them to Los Angeles. This creates a national standard and it creates a national registry of police officers so that if you messed up in Missouri, you can't go to Texas and become an officer as if nothing happened. And so all those things we think are super, super important uh, to build the kind of fabric and relationship between police and the community that's needed. Mm -hmm. So the resolution is essentially to voice support for- For uh, that bill. Okay. And to ask our members of Congress that represent Los Angeles to make sure that they support that bill. Excellent. Um, are there any new developments, new projects happening in this district that you're excited about? There, you know, there's so many to count. There are too many to count. So we've got Destination Crenshaw along the Crenshaw line. It's a hundred million dollar outdoor uh, museum dedicated to the story of African Americans in Los Angeles and the West. Uh, we have this new pool and another new pool at Van Ness Park, uh, representing an almost fifty million dollar investment just in aquatics. Uh, facilities here in the 8th uh, uh, Council District. We've got the Western Beautiful Project, an $11 million renovation of the Western uh, streetscape. Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Mall, the, the, the subject of much discussion, sometimes heated discussion. It will be developed. It will be developed in our image for us uh, and for uh, the future of our community. And so there are really so many to count. Um, that I'm, I'm sure I left out a really, really important one. Uh, but the point is uh, the district is on the move. Mm -hmm. The summer jobs uh, program is very popular. Is it coming back this year? It is absolutely coming back. It'll come back with a vengeance. Uh, this is gonna be a great summer for the young people of Los Angeles. We expect their parks are gonna be fully staffed. We wanna get all these pools open. There's gonna be a full set of activities from Little League to to dance, to all of it that you see in the park. Uh, we want this to be like the golden era. When I was a kid and many, many of the members of the council who grew up in this town, when I was a kid in the summer, you could just walk to your local park or a local LAUSD campus. You didn't have to be a student, you didn't have to show a card. There were adults there. If you wanted to learn to play sports, you could do that. There were classes you could take. There were tournaments you could join. Uh, we want that type of environment back in Los Angeles for every young people that, that live uh, you know, from, from the top of Granada Hills all the way to the tip of San Pedro. All right. Is there anything else you're excited about in, in this district? We're, there's so much to be excited about it in, in the, the district, but what we're most excited about is I feel like we're really close to having a breakthrough citywide that's really going to help us deal with homelessness, that's going to help move people off the street into shelter and into housing. Uh, on a nightly basis and we're going to change the situation where we have come to expect as a regular course of business that our neighbors sleep outside at night. Um, in terms of the encampments that are say close to where people live, work and play, what is the community saying? Oh, the community is absolutely irate. Uh, they, people do not, you know, no one buys a house and says, oh, I want to have a campsite in the, you know, in my backyard or, or at my front gate. And so people are understandably irate. People, you know, are not hostile towards homeless people and they don't blame homeless people, but they do feel like the government has a responsibility to do something about it. And, you know, they hold our feet to the fire as they should. Is homelessness also a public safety issue? Homelessness is a public safety issue. It's a public health issue. But greater than both of those, it's a moral issue. History's gonna judge us. You, me, everybody. Oh, you were around when people were sleeping in the streets in Los Angeles and you lived there. What did you do? And we're all gonna have to give an account for that. Councilman Marquise Harris Dawson, thank you so much for joining us to discuss issues important to CD8, including homelessness and public safety. And I'm Anita Bennett. This is LA Currents, and thank you for watching.